Hello everyone, my name is CCG88 and welcome to episode 50 of the refurbished Logo Evolution series. Today, we're going through one of the most popular cable television companies in the United States. I'm talking about HBO. HBO, or the home box office, was founded on November the 8th, 1972, making them 46 years old. They grew relatively slowly at first, but by April of 1975, they had around 100,000 subscribers. Their schedule expanded in 1981 by adapting a 24-hour schedule. In 1988, their subscriber base grew significantly. The home box office began to introduce original programming during the 1990s. One show in particular, called The Larry Sanders Show, saw universal acclaim and is ranked one of the greatest TV shows of all time. It ran for six seasons from 1992 to 1998. They continued to grow across the 2000s and the 2010s. By early 2018, HBO had secured over 5 million subscribers. They've introduced several other channels including HBO2 and HBO Family since 1972. Their latest service is HBO Max, which will launch in spring of 2020. They are currently owned by Warner Media Entertainment. There's several sections we could do, like their film subsidiary, HBO Films, which was founded in 1983, but because it's episode 50, and because you've read the title, we're looking at the IDs of HBO feature presentation, with the first one from 1975. They've had 19 since 1975, so make sure you have your popcorn and drink next to you, as this is going to take a long time to get through. The first one looked like this. Some of these openings don't have nicknames, but I got a nickname for all of them. I call this one Scanimate HBO, and it was used until 1978. <laughs> This is just one of 19, holy lord. There's way too much going on here, and this is just the first one. It's insanely creative, but it's definitely a poor logo compared to what HBO have now. Things don't get any cleaner with this. It's Scanimate HBO 2, and it was also seen from 1975 to 1978. These logos are definitely an eyesore. I'm trying to imagine what people thought of these when seeing them in the 1970s, but I'm too distracted from the loudness of the colours. Still, it's another inventive Scanimated ID. Up next is this. I've just called it Scanimate HBO3, although you could just call it Encore, and again, it was used from 1975 to 1978. <laughs>
This is much calmer in terms of the colours, but the music makes up for it. To be fair, although I don't like Scanimated logos, these three aren't too bad. If you ignore the type of animation that goes on in these, and just focus on what objects you can see, they're alright. The following six intros all finish the same way, and like the Scanimated logos, they were used simultaneously. The first of these six is the HBO feature marquee, and it was used from 1979 to 1982. The effects in these six are so 70s and 80s, this one animates pretty well for its time. The second opening in this HBO feature movie family is the Hollywood Walk. This was also used from 1979 to 1982. The music you hear in these is also very typical of the 70s and 80s, but again, it's decent. Next is the flashing theatre. It has the same date as the previous two. these so far have been very bright and bombastic, but they're tamer than what HBO used from 1975 to 78, which is what I like to see. The seventh intro is no different. This one is called Shapes in Space. This is the final logo to have the date 1979 to 82. I like the abstractness of the shapes in this opening, and the music is great like normal. I'm glad that HBO has been consistent with these HBO feature movie openings. They are all very well animated, even for their time, and the themes that accompany them all fit. The fifth HBO feature movie introduction keeps that consistency going. It's called Funky Marquee, and it was used from 1980 to 1982. <laughs> Do you see what I mean? Not one of these HBO feature movie logos lack at all. The final one in this collection was the liquid neon marking. Like before, it was used from 80 to 82. If you had an HBO subscription from 1979 to 1982, you would have seen all six of these openings, and that makes me happy. I'm glad all of them were used. But, when you compare these lot to what came next, these are practically nothing. Anyone who has an interest in logos and or HBO knows what's next. It's the grandfather of them all. It's arguably the most popular and the most memorable opening bumper that has ever been created. This is HBO in space. This was used from 1982 to 2002 for a total of 20 years. I have 24 videos of this logo. Yes, 24. It was that popular. I've put them into three categories. Category 1 is all the normal feature presentation openings. The original opening had a man tuning a cable on a TV set with his family, with the camera panning out of a window and continuing down the street. 
After a while, the classic HBO logo would fly towards us, and then we would go inside the O and end up on an end card looking something like this. This end card obviously varies a lot with this logo. I have three videos including the man tuning his TV set. There's a later version where the opening emerges from a fog.
there's also a short version where we just have the HBO logo in space. Category 2 has all the different end cards. These include HBO Theatre, HBO Comedy, and the list continues. These would play out like the short variant of the normal opening, where we just have HBO in space. The music would differ when the end card appears, depending on what the end card reads. There are 12 different end cards. I'm showing you them in the order they are on the CRG Wiki. The first of these 12 reads HBO Premiere Presentation. The second one is HBO Special. This is followed by HBO Theatre, which I have two videos for. The fourth different end card says HBO Music. Next one is the rock end card. After HBO Rock is HBO Family Showcase.
Number seven is HBO Comedy. Coming up next is Standing Room Only. We then take a stop to look at the on location version. According to the COG Wiki, the 10th different end card is HBO Original or HB Original. On Saturday night, the end card would enunciate HBO Saturday Night Movie. I have two videos here. I have the usual version, but also an extended version, where after we zoom into the O in HBO, we see a promo for something. After the promo, we see the end card. Tonight on the HBO Saturday Night Movie. Hello out there! Dolly Parton is Jake Ferris, and she claims she can turn anybody into a country singer. You wanna bet? She does. The next normal person that comes by, I'll take her. Whoa! How you doing? Nice night. Need a look? It's a sure bet for knockout comedy when Sylvester Stallone signs on with Dolly for a new sound and a whole new look in Rhinestone. Next on the HBO Saturday Night Movie. And the final different end card speaks HBO Sunday Night Movie. Like with the Saturday Night Movie versions, I have a regular variant as well as an extended one with a promo.
tonight on the HBO Sunday Night Movie. Dad's yeah, a butcher. Oh, now he's gonna pay. He's the new kid in town, trying hard to fit in. I promise, teach karate. But first, he's got to learn how to stand alone. I don't have much of a cheering section. You got me. In the smash hit that'll knock you off your feet, Ralph Macchio, Pat Morita, The Karate Kid, the HBO Sunday Night Movie. And now we enter category three, the abnormal videos. The most famous unusual variants are the April Fool's ones. The first one has the opening crudely recreated with a cheap but clever end card looking like this, which then cuts to this text on a black background. <laughs> The second April Fools video has the HBO logo fall onto the set of the first April variant. You're watching HBO. Who needs excitement? The next odd alternative logo in category 3 is this Hungarian version. Instead of including an end card, the flying HBO logo fades and we see HBO zooming towards us. And finally, we have a collaboration between HBO and Silver Screen Partners, or SSP. This was a company to fund films for HBO Pictures, later HBO Films, and TriStar. SSP existed until 1998. I don't know anyone who dislikes this opening. How can you hate a logo that has such phenomenal effects and sound? I first saw this in 2015. I can't imagine how revolutionary and fantastic this was back in 1982, and the fact they used this for 20 whole years makes it a special piece of HBO's history. HBO has not forgotten this logo at all. They keep bringing it up. It just shows how much love it has. The mix of live action and animation is superb for its time, and the music is simply breathtaking to listen to. I wish this exact piece was recreated for something special, as like an anniversary or something, because I think everyone would like to see that in 2019. And we've only just entered the halfway mark. Up next is this. There are nicknames for this logo on the Sergio Wiki, but I came up with the HBO film strip. This was used from 1986 to 1997. There are three variants. One says movie. There's a Hungarian version that says Motsi, which means movie or cinema. And there's a Polish opening that has the word film. Film in Polish means movie in English.
I really like this intro. Interestingly, it was done by Pacific Data Images, the company that would later work with DreamWorks to make the Shrek franchise. They also did the effects for the Deke logo from 1988, as well as some IDs for NBC and Red Globo. Anyway, going back to HBO. Although this bumper isn't as well known as their previous one, it's still impressive, and it has its place in HBO's history. Up next is the only ID to say special presentation. I like to call it the HBO Mantle, and it was used from 1986 to 1994. This is somewhat basic animation, at least compared to what came before, but I do like having something more straightforward every now and then. What's next? Oh yeah, the HBO Pendulum. This intro was used from 1990 to 1994. Goodfellas, Awakenings, Edward Scissorhands, The Grifters, Mr. and Mrs. Bridge, Hamlet, Pacific Heights, Sleeping with the Enemy. Simply the best movies. This is the second opening done at Pacific Data Images. It's another good logo for the 90s. All of HBO's IDs from 1982 to 1997 are very impressive for their time, and this next one works ambitiously too. There aren't any nicknames for this, but I went with HBO Filmstrip 2. It was used from 1990 to 1993. I do like this logo, but is it just me or is it too dark? Maybe it's just the quality of the video that I got. If the quality was worse, you might not be able to see the film strip properly. In 1997, HBO had a rebrand, so they dropped the 1986 logo in favour of this. This has the fantastic nickname HBO 1997, but when you notice what happens in the ID, you could call it HBO Across the World. It was seen until 1998. This logo plays out like this. The famous HBO icon is seen in different situations. There are seven of these, at least from what I know, and I've put them in no particular order. One has the logo being punched. The following movie is ready. One has a man being chased by HBO. One has HBO in a fish tank or in the sea. One has it being scanned. There's one where HBO is in a limo and pictures of it are being taken. One has it on top of a building. And the final one has a man coming out of what we can assume is the sewers from the middle of the O. People then come over to him whilst walking across the rest of the logo. When this logo was first used, we saw a brief look at the movie that was on, and then we'd have one of the normal IDs playing. The version I have is with the limo. It's on now. There's no topic that's too much for this talk show host. Rodney Dangerfield and Burt Reynolds star in Meet Wally Sparks. It's on HBO, right now. These weren't around for that long. HBO brought a new opening to the table pretty quickly, which makes this 1997 logo a bit forgettable and pointless. Although I do like the situations HBO ends up in. Think of this next ID as a reimagining of the fantastic 1982 one. Got that? Good. Here's what it looks like. It's called The Road, and it was used from 1998 to 2011.
a more common shorter version exists. Some people dislike the fast pace of this one, but that's exactly what makes it unique. It's a great successor and I love that the music is a reorchestrated version of the original 82 theme. We have another uncomplicated feature presentation ID now, and it's HBO Aurora. This was used from 2011 to 2014. I have a version that reads HBO Canada. And now, an HBO Canada feature presentation. It has effort, which I give credit for. Don't worry though, the cool CGI and amazing music and sounds come back shortly. But first, this. It has a nickname the HBO Gallery, and it was introduced in 2014. And the variants I have for it are still in use today. This is how the normal version goes. And now, an HBO feature presentation. The two variants I have for it are the HBO family ones. One is on a black background. and one is on a white background with the HBO Family Future Presentation text in blue. The normal version of this retired in 2017 when HBO launched something else. The Family versions are still used in 2019 as they don't use a 2017 opener. So, 2017. You all should know what HBO delivered in this year. It's of course, this. The HBO City of Tomorrow. It's still in use today. There's a variant that has the extra words Movie Premiere underneath the finished logo. There's also another version that reads HBO Movie Presentation, but literally every single upload of this is potato recorded. There's a Spanish version too, but that's potato recorded as well. For the sake of it, I decided to feature some potato recordings just to show you what they're like. I am sorry for the quality. Going back to the original, this is just spectacular. In my opinion, it's the best logo of the 2010s. They took inspiration from the 1982 logo and the 1998 opening, mixed them together in 2017, and made this. It's truly a phenomenal ID, and the music just blows my mind. 
very impressed with this. It's a perfect finish to this episode. Overall, HBO have had some enormously terrific openers. Even those from the 70s have high amounts of effort. I wanted this episode to be special, and I really hoped it worked. Thank you very much for watching this episode, I really hope you enjoyed it, and I will see you all in episode 51. Goodbye!